Are you ready? When I started to get down under the people pleasing, I, I could see that initially when I first saw that, I said, most of my life, most of my actions in my life are based on fear of consequences. You know, why am I with this person? Why am I at this job? Why am I struggling with this thing or that thing? It's because I'm afraid I'm going to lose something. I'm afraid it could get worse. <laughs> Maybe like, you better appreciate a good thing because it could get a lot worse. And I would do all that comparison. Well, there's a lot of people that have it worse off than me. You know, that's just a bunch of comparison. Who's supposed to feel good by putting other people down and thinking you're better off than somebody else, really? I mean, you know, we start to get wise to these tricks. And what I found is, is that, that I was fearful and I was inhibited and I couldn't really speak the truth. I couldn't really demonstrate the truth because of this fear. I, I had to face the fear and get in touch with every aspect of the fear that was there. Fear of rejection, fear of abandonment, fear of betrayal. I remember early on with the Course, you know, I thought, wow, I've got so many fears and I need to expose and face these. So one of the first things I did uh, back in the late 1980s was, I decided I was going to get a little travel trailer and go down and live in the woods, kind of like, like Henry David Thoreau or Robinson Crusoe or something, and it's like really face the fears. There was a lot of bugs down there. Big bugs and snakes. I was just a convenience and comforts of, of living in the suburbs in a nice house with no snakes, no bugs. And, you know, but when you're down there, you start to face, and even my, my parents, my girlfriend, what are you doing? My parents were like, you didn't even like Boy Scouts. And now you're down there with this Course in Miracles book in the woods. Living down there by yourself, you know, my girlfriend was like, not too happy about that either. Like, what are you doing with your life? But I, I realized, I said, like I would read the Course and it said, you know, you really think that you are alone unless you are with another body. And I said, yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> that's what I believe. Jesus is like saying, you know. So I'm like thinking, huh, so I've got a a belief in companionship. And it's like, yeah. And, and, is this good? Or, uh, you no. Know, remember, you are responsible for your state of mind. You are not lonely because you are not with another body. You are lonely because you're choosing to be lonely. You're, you're lonely because you believe that you're a body, that you believe you're alone. So I had to start facing those things. And that was actually a very helpful hermitage experience. I, I read the Course a lot, and oh, I tried starving the ego. I tried, to, you know, asceticism and deprivation. It doesn't work. You know, it's just, <laughs> ego is just like laughing like, ha! You think you can just come down here and live in the woods and get rid of me? Uh, it's like, ha ha! Like, just, just try to meditate down there. I'll, let's see how quiet your mind can be. I'll just wreak havoc down here in my mind. I'm doing nothing. And then I said, okay, I'm going to fast. And he goes like, well, you think you're going to fast me away? Huh? You know, you're just not going to eat. And then, you know, I'll be gone. And I'm like, yeah, I read about it in the book. Okay, let's try it. Come on. Yeah. So, actually, the first time down there, it was like me starting to realize that, that I, I needed a lot of mind training to be able to go towards undoing this ego. Like the ego is like, I've been here for millennium in your mind. Do you think you're just gonna like starve me out of here? I said, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm just eating bread and water. Just bread and water. See how you like that? And it's just like, whoa, we'll see. You want to play that way? And so I would go for weeks with bread and water, and then I would go out to like a, a Walmart in my, my tunnel. <laughs> I'd just go out to the aisles, look at all this stuff. It was, you know, you could see that you, it's a lot of mind training. So round one goes to the ego. <laughs> uh, 
But I wasn't knocked out. I was just, I was out of breath right there. And then, actually, that's when the Holy Spirit said, you know, this way is not working. Why don't you read the I Need Do Nothing section of the course, you know, where people have tried fighting against sin and, you know, contemplation and long periods of meditation. He says, no, your way will be different. A holy relationship is given you as a means of saving time. I thought, that sounds good. Does that mean I get a companion? What is this, what's it going to look like? But the thing was, he was like, no, I, I want, you're, you're letting me speak to you now. You're hearing me. Now I want, we want to move to phase two. I want you to let me speak through you. I was like, oh, that's not going to be so easy. You know, I'm shy. I can't, I can't go around and, I can't give you my mouth. He said, you said I could have everything. Oh my gosh, so but going. So then I started to guide to go out to course groups and to travel and to just show up for lots of holy encounters, you know. When you meet anyone, remember it's a holy encounter. And to do that, and that's been my path. It was like being used by the Holy Spirit. So it's not been a path of, of meditation or contemplation so much as being used in the joy of the Spirit, to let miracles come through. And that was very helpful. By the time I did that, I did that for several years. By the time I came back, to, was guided to my second hermitage, which was up in the woods of Michigan, my mind was much more still from all that purposeful use. You know, he says the one use of the body is as a communication device. I had given my body over as a communication device so fully that my mind started to be cleared of all the chatter, the mind chatter. And actually I could drop into some really deep states of mind, not through a bunch of techniques, but just by doing the course workbook lessons and letting the Spirit direct my daily actions and my daily thoughts. That was what, what really was helpful. So that's, that's what kind of sent me in the right direction. And then it's never stopped. It just, you know, it wasn't like, okay, you'll do this for three months or six months. It's just continued on and on and on. And the state of mind is still, but the body, it's like the body can be used, the words can be used in very flowing, spontaneous ways. But it's, it's totally involuntary. I don't, I don't have a topic in mind when I'm showing up. I, don't, I really don't have an agenda. Uh, I don't know what words will be given or be, how I'll be spoken through. It's just very, very spontaneous. <laughs>